Last stage of Vuelta a Catalunya, uh, stage seven this was, 40.8 kilometers to go. Huge crash here, takes out Bardi, Bardet, Bargui, Geshka, a lot of people. It was really, really bad crash, 70 kilometers an hour. Um, Howie Kulis as well. Uh, and uh, we have David Formolo up the road at 1 minute 38 ahead of the peloton. Uh, who includes most of the favourites like Adam Yates, Simon Yates, uh, Egan Manel, Miguel Angel Lopez, Valverde, um, and Quintana. So yeah, it was a really bad crash. You can see here, there's loads of um, favourites wiped out. Here's David Fordermanel, 134 out, absolute solid ride. Here's the break getting caught back with Jonathan Navarez on the front for uh, Team Sky, followed by Michigan Scott. So both of them are about, tw uh, Bernal's about 14 seconds down, I believe, and Yates is potentially... Uh, 18, no, sorry, Yates is like 18 seconds down and Bernal's 14 or something like that. Um, but yeah, so anyway, but these two teams are really trying to line it up. I think Yates was second, yeah, and Bernal was third. And time gaps around 10 to 15 seconds. So around this corner, you see that um, Darren MP decides it's time to go. Um, he attacks, it's a good call, to be honest. Uh, Team Sky didn't have many riders left. Uh, they only had Bernal um, and Sivakov left. Navarez had just done a big turn, but he knew he couldn't let Darren MP get away because then... Uh, Yates, he would go across to him and work, and that was basically what uh, Michigan Scott tried to do all day, get someone up the road and then get um, Adam Yates uh, to come across, um, and obviously Simon Yates is in a good GC position, but he's not going to get chased down, I think he was only maybe 11th um, or something like that, um, but he was a fair way back, so it's basically a three-horse race. Anyway, at this point, Simon Yates in his skin suit, I noted, so he's definitely up for the breakaway, goes across, Quintana goes across, and so does Ivan Sosa. He then had Mike Woods going across, um, as well as uh, Andre Zeitz, I believe it was, for Astana, um, who tried to negate that move. But realistically, there was no point him coming across because Quintana so, um, is pretty up there on GC. He's the best GC, about 40 seconds back, I believe, um, that realistically... Astana would still have to chase. Um, no one really cares about podium on this race as much as like other races. They just want to win. Um, so Astana, you can see here, here all the guys in the race, um, and you'll see the gap is, it's not significant. Um, maybe it's a 15, 20 second gap. And the other problem is no one's doing work apart from Quintana. Um, but luckily for him, I believe it was Mark Soler dropped back from the break and helped him out. But even so, two, two riders against um, Astana, who had two really strong riders um, left, in, uh, including... Um, well, yeah, so they just had two really strong guys, and then they also had Miguel Angel Lopez. Um, so, yeah, they, it was going to be tough for them to get back. You can see Valverde and Yates here there in the main bunch, um, along with uh, Egan Bernal. Anyway, this then gets brought back pretty much, and Yates, he goes, you know what, I'm going again. So Simon Yates, 22.6k to go, goes and does a real strong launch. I mean, this is like real big boy attack. Um, and you'll see that no one really goes across. And then Adam Yates, his brother, is just like, you know what? I'm going for it and goes across and this is an absolute textbook move and this basically um, was the move of the day they've been planning it all day and Team Sky are like we're not going to chase um, although they're in a good position they're third on GC realistically they want to blow up Astana and then get Bernal across um, maybe by, in my opinion I think Bernal should have followed but maybe Miguel Angel Lopez would have done um, but he didn't follow so now you've got both Yates up the road and they were just going full um, and Adam Yates um, was really lucky to have Simon Yates there just to, because they're both, you know, very similar riders um, and, you know, they, they are incredibly strong, both of them. Uh, at the moment, it seems like um, Simon Yates is going a little bit uh, weaker than Adam Yates, um, which is a bit odd because he's going for the Giro. But we can see the time gap. Formula is still out front, just an absolute trooper, just getting it done. Um, and you can see here they're just powering along. Uh, 14 seconds back it was uh, Adam Yates, and I believe Quintana was, um, Bernal was 18 seconds back. So they really didn't need much time. Factor in a time bonus of six seconds. He only needed eight seconds ahead of um, uh, ahead of Miguel Angel Lopez in order to win the stage. So it was, you know it was, it was touch and go. Uh, the time gaps gave him uh, a gap of up to 40 seconds. Here's James Knox, my boy. Um, he was he rode incredibly well on the stage. Was in the early break. Got on the back of um, Adam Yates and Simon Yates and managed to survive up the climb. Gave him some turns. And on this descent, um, that I think they realised that Simon Yates had, um, was dropped, but not by that much. So they waited for him. So that then basically he could recover on the descent. Um, James Knox was a good lad and helped him do some turns. And then Simon Yates got back on the front and just to do one last turn. And you can see, still see here, Astana on the front. It's Pelo Bilbao, sorry, who's the strong rider um, who was on the front now. He's really trying to drill it. Miguel Angel Lopez looks pretty calm at the moment. I think maybe he just didn't believe the time gaps. I didn't because the time gaps were like suddenly going absolutely wild and like way too, like they suddenly gained like 20 seconds in like a kilometre. And you're like, that's probably, probably not true. 
Uh, so here's James Knox just doing a bit of turn. They're not descending that fast. Um, it wasn't the most aggressive descending, but that was because they wanted Simon Yates to get back. Anyway, the next climb, Adam Yates set an infernal place and dropped everyone, um, including James Knox. And then Pavel Sivakov goes on the, um, on the front for Team Sky to try and bring them back. This didn't make any sense for me. Bernal should have attacked here, I think, instead of having Sivakov drive a high pace because all that did was basically just do the work for um, Miguel Angel Lopez. Instead, they should, um, Quint uh, Quintana and Valverde and Bernal should have just done one two attack, one two, one two, one two, um, until they dropped Lopez and then they'd be away. Um, so, yeah, I think that would have been a lot cleverer, but maybe Team Sky were worried and just wanted a decent finish on GC um, to get some World Tour points and all the rest of it because it is a World Tour race, so people, maybe not Team Sky as much, but other teams did want World Tour points. Valverde now decides that he's going on the attack, um, and for some reason Bernal responds, but he shouldn't have responded. He should have let Miguel Angel Lopez respond. Um, but Miguel Angel Lopez does respond. Stephen Quiz works on his wheel, and Yates is still going well. He said that he was on the climb. He th thought he probably wasn't losing that much time. I agree, but on the headwind, he was saying it was really hard on his own and all the rest of it. Um, so in some ways, he should have maybe let Simon Yates gain more time on him. Um, and then he would have had him help for longer. I'm not really sure. It's a hard one to play. But this is when Egan Bernal does a real big attack and really tries to split it up. Um, but unfortunately for him, everyone can follow. The road at this point isn't really very steep. You can see they're in the big ring. They sort of go 30 plus kilometers an hour. So the draft is really, really strong. So to get away here, you have to be really, really strong. He's getting a good draft on the motorbike, but you know it's not really going to happen. And here it says there's 52 seconds um, in between, which is just fake news. Um, because as you can see now, it's 52 seconds between Formula and um, yeah, and the sorry, the main peloton instead of 52 seconds to Yatesy, which is what they had it as. So the gaps were wrong, for sure. But anyway, Formula has it 2.9k to go. This is all just descent, um, pretty much. Um, there's a little bit of uphill here, but it's mainly descent to the finish now. Um, so they sort of go uphill. They have their climb. They go like on the descent like this part, and then they have one more climb, and then it's a really fast descent into the finish. Um, so yeah, you can see Enrique Mass is there. Uh, Thibaut Pino is also there. A lot of like the main guys you'd expect to be there, apart from Bargui and Bardet, um, who both crashed out, um, which is really unfortunate. Uh, it looks like they're not too badly hurt, both of them. But even so, it's um, it's never good news to see people crash out. I think they said they were going like seventy k's an hour or something, which is like. Mate, that's a, it's a serious one. The ride of the day obviously goes for Formula, absolute legend. Just went out early and uh, from the main, from the breakaway, um, and just rode really hard tempo the whole time. Bernal goes again on this slight uphill drag, um, just before they drop down to the finish. Um, but as you can tell, like nothing was going to go. Everyone's marking absolutely everything. Valverde, I think, tries um, to get across. I think he was slightly gapped off the back. Um, and yeah, so. Pino has now decided that, you know what, oh no, no, sorry, that, yeah, he was slightly gapped off the back, and this is Thibaut Pino, I believe, um, who decided that, you know what, I want second place, um, and there he goes, oh, sorry, no, who is this, oh, Enric Mass, oh, Enric Mass, yeah, decides to go, um, but I think he is brought back, um, finally, uh, so yeah, here's the further back, we have Quintana, we have Bernal, we have Miguel Angel Lopez, um, and we have Yatesy as well, and there is, uh, Enric Mass, but they're all looking around, no one really wants to chase, everyone's like, oh, well, you know, they they sort of know they're not going to get any points. Um, they're not getting more time, sorry, for GC. Uh, so they all let it go. Um, and now on the left, you can see everyone else. Woods, Valverde, Kreisweig, um, other Yatesy. Um, so, yeah, that's that's the main selection. Um, and I believe Thibaut Pono is about to go now. He spots a little gap in between um, and just goes for it. No one chases because they're like, no need to chase. Um and yeah, cheerio, done. That's pretty much it. I think Woods goes for it, and then it's just like, nah, what's the point? Um, and then Enrique Mass is on his own here uh, and just doing well. Went for it himself, fair play. I mean, like, you know, he's he's not in good good fun position for GC, but, um, you know, he's still top 10 or something. So you might as well try and get some bonus seconds. And Formolo takes it in for the easy solo win. Good lad. I mean, like... He rode this stage incredibly well. Um, I think he realised that, you know, a break might go because this course is very much like it is just, if you're strong and just ride a consistent pace the whole time, everyone else is going to be surging on the climbs, going really hard on the climbs and then messing up on the descent. So, you know, if you're a strong rider like him, uh, then, you know, you're going to get a result. Um, and the descent pit, you can you get a rest. I mean, it's sort of like you, everyone's going at terminal velocity on the descent. So if you're just on the top tube and everyone else is on the top tube, you're saving en as much energy as they are. Um, and then when they start to mess around, you can you can put that energy that you've saved there to good work. And Enric Mass, again, just looking good. There's a bit of top tube action. They did love the top tube action today. Uh, he did some very aggressive um, cornering on the top tube, as in, like, he was sort of leaning 
had his leg out leaning in the top tube, which I've never seen before, but was a bit sketch, but anyway, he love it. And I don't think he realised he had a fat gap because he's going full gas to the line. I would have been like, check behind me, like, mate, I've got years. Um, and yeah, there he goes. Good lad, and everyone else comes in a couple seconds behind. No GCO change overall. Miguel Angel Lopez takes the win um, ahead of Adam Yates and again Bernal. So cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy, uh, and I'll see you in the next one.